Today I'm going to show you how one of the best electrical insulators used all over the world to stop electricity from flowing becomes conductive if you heat it enough. Glass is mainly composed of silica with some other components like soda or lime. These additives lower the melting point of silica making the glass easier to produce and mold. Normally glass is a good insulator because its atomic structure doesn't have free electrons or other charge carriers that can move easily. The resistivity of glass is typically really high, often in the range of tens of billions to even hundreds of trillions of ohm meters. That's why glass is used in high voltage insulators for power transmission lines. And you can see in these 200 watt incandescent bulbs that the glass is what separates the wires going up into the bulb. This small gap can withstand over 15,000 volts before breaking down and sparking. But this all changes when we heat up the glass so that it starts to become slightly molten or like a thick liquid. Okay, I have here two incandescent bulbs that are wired in series so that for one of them to get power, the other one has to be on. So if I turn off only one of them, they both go off. Either one. Now notice how on the inside of an incandescent bulb, we have one wire coming up here. It goes across this filament, and this filament is what heats up and gives off the light, and then the other electrode comes down here. So obviously, in order for power to move through this, this filament has to be connected. But what I'm going to do is break this light bulb open and then cut off the wires at the top here so the only connection they could have is through the glass here itself. I'm just going to put this in here. Okay, so this is exactly what we need here. Now I'm just going to snip these wires at the base. Now the only way for these two wires to complete the circuit is for the current to pass through the glass itself. Now normally glass is a very good insulator, but watch what happens when we heat up the glass. So you can see right now they're both on and I'm gonna leave them both on, but take out this light bulb. So the other one turns off and I'm gonna replace it with this. So right now they're still both off because the circuit isn't completed because these wires aren't connected. But now watch what happens when we heat up this glass. When I start heating the glass, the rigid atomic structure of the glass breaks down and the glass transitions into a molten state. When glass becomes molten, the ions in it like sodium and calcium ions become much more mobile and moving ions can carry the current until it becomes a conductive ionic liquid. Whoa, it's on. <laughs> Look at that, and it's staying on. Oh no. So the current itself is heating up the glass enough. Look at it start to spark. Oh, the current going through the glass is heating it up enough to keep it melted. That is cool. Look at that, it's staying on because I melted the glass and then the current moving through the glass is keeping the glass heated up. <laughs> that is cool. So this molten glass is carrying the current right now. Now if I power this one off and let the glass cool down a bit, Now I bet it won't be hot enough to carry the current anymore. Oh look, it's heating up. <laughs> it worked, look, it's heating up all on its own. <laughs> okay, now turn it back on. So now the glass isn't molten enough to let the ions pass through it. But let's heat it up again. So what's actually happening is glass electrolysis here. There it goes. Positively charged sodium ions and calcium ions are migrating towards the negative electrode. 
And also at the positive electrode, oxygen ions from the silica should break down and release oxygen gas. Since this is alternating current, the positive and negative electrodes are changing continually. So let's see if we see any gas bubbles at the electrodes here. Just notice how in the glass normally there's no bubbles at all. It's just pure glass, no gas inside of it. But now look at the one that we melted and ran a current through it. Look at the bubbles in here. So this is actually oxygen gas. So it was basically like we were running the current through an ionic liquid. So, we're, so we were doing glass electrolysis. What's really neat about glass becoming more conductive when it's molten is that means that it will now absorb microwaves. That's why if I just take a regular bottle and put it in the microwave, So nothing happens. But if I just heat the glass until it's red hot in one spot and then turn on the microwave, watch what happens. Okay, it's getting red hot right there. Oh yeah, and this is high on the list of dumb things to do in a microwave, so please don't try this at home. There it goes. Whoa. <laughs> Holy cow. Look how bright that is. It just melted a hole right through it. That is so cool. The alternating electric fields of the microwave are able to vibrate the ions and molecules in the glass now. So now the microwave is heating up the glass where it didn't before. Oh man. That is cool. So it broke when it was cooling down, but this is the hole that it made with the dripping glass. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please hit that subscribe button to stay updated with my latest videos. And thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.